Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 16th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Neat diary today from Brad about more mail spam that includes encrypted office documents. So the user has to enter a password, then the user has to enable macros in order to get infected with the latest Hermes ransomware. Always amazing the loops that users will jump through in order to get themselves infected if they typically have a hard time following instructions like this for good. Now, aside from that, students in class always ask how can I get more packet captures in order to sharpen their analyst skills. Well, this is one of these opportunities. Brad, whenever he writes about malware, he also links to a full PCAP of the particular infection. So you can go through it, you can recover the malware and really sort of work out how it all happened. It looks like as a follow-up to last week's segment smack denial of service vulnerability in the TCP reassembly code for Linux, we now sort of have the IP equivalent, an IP defragmentation or IP fragmentation reassembly vulnerability that also leads to a denial of service. Almost as interesting as the patch for this vulnerability is a second issue that's being patched in the IP stack here, and that's overlapping fragments. With this patch, Linux will no longer process overlapping pack fragments. Instead, it will just drop them as it probably should have done sort of for the last 40 years. Now, interestingly, in the patch note, it does say that they still have to do the same thing to prevent denial of service issue in IPv6. Not sure if that already has been done or if this is still something in the pipeline. As far as overlapping fragments go, they have been dropped by IPv6 stacks for quite a while now. And if you're using a Mac, you may be familiar with some system dialogues that are security sensitive. For example, if you install software like VMware that installs kernel modules, you will be asked to allow that particular kernel module to be loaded. Now, OS X and Mac OS is pretty careful in how they allow you to actually click on that button. They try to avoid scripts and the like to be used to click on a button because then malware could give itself approval to actually load that kernel module. Mac security researcher Patrick Wardle now came up with a number of tricks to bypass these protections. Apparently, they are still working in the latest version of macOS, but they will no longer work in the next version that's still not released for macOS. So probably Apple will at some point release a patch to also fix existing versions of macOS. Another little problem here is that a script could execute these clicks rather quickly so a user may not necessarily notice what's happening. Overall, this is of course a approach escalation vulnerability and an attacker has to have already malware running on the system. But for example, by loading a kernel module, well, the attacker would now have very persistent access to the system. And researchers at the RWTH in Aachen did take a closer look at CoinHive. First of all, they tried to find as many sites as possible that do deploy the CoinHive script in order to get browsers to mine crypto coins. Now, they did this in part by looking for WebAssembly. WebAssembly is compiled JavaScript that many modern browsers can run and, well, it runs faster so that's why it's particularly attractive for coin mining. One of the first things they found was that pretty much all of the WebAssembly code they found was related to coin mining. Secondly, they then tried to come up with better ways to actually identify whether or not the code was coin mining or doing something else, which led them to discover about five times more coin mining sites than prior attempts to, for example, build block lists. 
All the sites together, they found generated about $250,000 a month in Monero. That's about a little bit more than 1% of the total Monero being mined each month. What's probably most interesting is that they really found that only 10 different individuals or groups are responsible for about 80% of the CoinHive mining activity. So they just looked at CoinHive, which of course of the dominant browser crypto jacking software being used. But of course, there are others out there not really sure how they compare to CoinHive at this point. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.